G'day folks and welcome to the build vlog series for the new aquaponic system in the not so new aquaponic area. Now today we're going to be looking at plumbing up the fish tank, getting basically the fittings in there and also the start of the build on the radial flow settler. Thought I'd bring you up to speed, we got off to a bit of a false start the other day uh, but before we do that I thought I'd explain um, a couple of little holes in the tank we have here. So as you can see in this tank, we already have four holes. We have a large one at the top and we have three small ones at the bottom. The one at the very bottom there is an outlet for the solids waste. Paul had this plumbed up as a dual drain system and that water went straight out to his radial flow settler. The second hole up from the base was actually plugged when I purchased the system from Paul. And the third one was the inlet, which actually had a venturi on the outside that helped rotate the water and also aerate it at the same time. And the large hole at the top was a 40 mil one, which basically acted as a skimmer to take the clean water out into the moving bed bioreactor that he was running. Now the tank bill got off to a bit of a full start the other day, I started to film it. I forgot that this tank here hadn't been used before, so I needed to drill out the 40 mil hole into a 50 mil one to take my, the drain fittings I want to use. Unfortunately, I didn't have the correct hole saw, so I had to postpone it for a little while. And yeah, we'll pretty much we'll pick up the build from there. I'm back at it today with the new hole saw. So that's pretty much all the one that's going in. That is the, it is double check, yes it is, a 64 millimeter or two and a half inch hole. And that's what you need for the um, inch and a half or 40 mil uniseals. And the larger 50 mil uniseals, both the drain and the pressure uniseals, take the three inch or 76 mil saw. So luckily with this type of hole saw, there's enough thread on there to be able to throw, I'll throw, uh, screw that one in and I can use that as a guide in the hole. So hopefully you're going to be able to make this out. So that hole saw fits in there nicely. There we go. And we'll act as a guide as this one start to spin. These walls here too, they're a nice, oh, they're probably about six mil. Uh, the minimum wall thickness for uni seals is three millimeters. So this six millimeter uh, wall is more than enough for this uh, inside edge of the uni seal itself. So one more check of the camera settings and I'm going to drill a hole. Actually, I haven't used this method myself before with this um, style of hole saw. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Because of the thickness of this wall as well, being six mil, over six mil, quarter of an inch, I can run this blade forward the whole way through with an IBC. I'd start the pilot hole off first and then run the saw backwards. Otherwise, it's going to grab your uh, plastic and rip it. So here we go. So there's a lot of plastic to pick up down here. So I might use the uh, vacuum cleaner to do that. So there we go, folks. A little bit of a swarf to tidy up just with the deburring tool. But these uni seals will fit in here nice and tight. So give them a bit of a bang, nice and flush. And away we go. And then all I need to do is just mark out and cut the entrance into the radial flow settler there. And we should be on our way. I should have these uh, plumbed up today. Um, by the way, Kira was practicing with her textures. So that's what that is. I don't have a tattoo on my hand. So I've just got this little deburring tool. You can use the edge of a uh, craft knife if you want, but just excuse my wrist. It just goes around like that and chops off any, any bits of this swarf that may compromise the seal of the uni seal in the hole itself. Uh, the, the holes, by the way, have normally a two millimeter tolerance uh, either way, uh, but I find you know, a tighter hole, the better the seal, especially with things like um, IBCs. This one here, we can work from the same side and just go around the inside. This tank's gonna have to come out and get all that swarf collected that's fallen in there. There we go. Now pop the uni seal in and we'll have a nice watertight seal. As easy as that. Just quickly folks, the fish wanted me to remind you that we do have that Backyard Aquaponics Beginner's Guide. It's an online interactive guide where you can learn about aquaponics if you're new to the growing method. It starts off with what is aquaponics, then goes all the way through 
to building your own system. Not only that, how to cycle the system and gives you a couple of pointers on the plants that you might like to start off with as well. It is fully interactive. Uh, basically, you can ask it questions and it will present different sections of the guide for you to learn more about aquaponics. A few folks who have already purchased the guide, a quick heads up, I've just added a module looking at solids lifting outlet fittings and also drain fittings as well, the DIY jobbies, and giving you a couple of different ways you can connect them, whether they're permanently glued or another option where you can reclaim the fittings and use them in different builds as you expand your system. So do suss it out if you're new to aquaponics and you want to have a bit of a crack at learning how to start a system off the right way the first time. You can check it out and also my online store using the links down in the description. That's enough of me spruiking. So on this tank here, I'm using the drain work from the old aquaponics system, the two tank system. They use the other two tanks like that. Going to need a bit of adjustment down the bottom here to cut it out. I'll cut it off in for the right height for the inlet into the radial flow settler. Now the base work underneath the radial flow settler and the moving bed bioreactor, that's nice and level. So I know where this is sitting. So what I want to do is just uh, install this basically, just a dry run installation so I can work out the level, uh, how far down basically this drain work here. I need to cut it for the double elbows that will be running into the settler. So the easiest way to do that, I suppose, is just do a dry run um, with the fittings. Just a bit of a tip, some people will say to use a uh, plumbing lubricant like a silicone. Don't use any petrochemicals because it can react with the um, uniseal. Um, yeah, but some people use, say to use a little bit of dish soap or the silicon lubricant plumbers use, but I don't worry about that. I just use a little bit of water and I find that that is generally enough to get the uniseal in. And hopefully I won't make a fool of myself. It does take a bit of force and effort. And it helps if you use an end cap. Otherwise you're sort of um, hurting your hands a bit. So There we go, we got her in. Now it's just a matter of wiggling it around, which I'll use this pipe for once I get the end cap off. Just use this to get it in the rest of the way. Give it a bit of a wiggle. And there we go. And just to show you on that side there, we have more than enough pipe to put in the coupling and the top bit of pipe for the solids lifting outlet. So the drain work is now in and I could, if I wanted to, work out what the levels are there to drill the holes for the radial flow settler. But before I do that, I think I might actually take the top off. And before I even do that, I thought I would show you what I've done to hold the radial flow settlers in place. Down here, we have a couple of, I think they're 50 mil or two inch by about eight inch or 20 centimeter sleepers basically and I've leveled them using some packing bits and pieces so they're nice and level. Down there we've got a paver actually using it to uh, pack up one end. So I'm using little scrap bits of plastics as shims to keep it off the ground because these guys won't rot and I've also got some aluminum or aluminium discs depending on where you live. Uh, my father they're just off cuts and he was using them as packers and I, I scored a few of them and we're using that just to create a little bit of a firm base there for the sleepers to sit on so they're nice and solid. I could have used timber and ply and that sort of thing, but they're just gonna rot out and go spongy over time. Both the aluminium and the plastic will stay nice and secure. So this here is level and it will take easily take the weight of our uh, upwards to around about 400, probably won't be quite 400 kilos worth of weight. Uh, when the two filters, or well, one settler and the uh, bioreactor are full of water. So now I'll go grab the jigsaw and we'll get ready to flip this one's lid after I lay a tarp down first, of course. I already have a video on how I've cut these guys up to make a radial flow settler, so I won't go through that here. You can check out that link down in the description. But just a bit of a rough idea on what I'm doing is I'm trying to match up this groove here with the side profile of the drum itself. So after we chop it off, we can flip it over and the um, exposed bit of drum here will fit nicely within that groove, just so it's a nice secure seal, basically just chop and flip the top of this. Uh, this one over here 
it'll have pretty much all the same treatment done to it. I'm just going to be cutting it up inside this pouch tray so I don't have to um, try and get all the bits of blue plastic from all around the yard. So I'll stop nattering on, we'll set this camera up and we'll get into it. So I started off by marking out a rough line, then drilling a pilot hole for the jigsaw, and then just used the jigsaw to remove the top. I forgot to mention before, this has had hospital uh, detergent in it. So yeah, nothing too toxic, can be hosed out. The top here, I did go off track in a couple of places, but nothing too drastic. And you can actually see the abnormal molding style of these barrels here. They tend to be fatter in some places than others. But the lid fits on nicely. I could probably trim it down and get it to fit a little bit more snugly, but I think that will do. And when the time comes, um, we'll just chop a hole in here. Or the other option is, we can see if the existing lid fits. No, unfortunately, it's just a little bit too narrow. I could get it to balance on there nicely, but I won't worry about that. I will chop up this one. I'll not chop up, but yeah. Just cut a hole in the center and we'll use this one. And I will also use my existing stilling well, just because this pipe work is that expensive. I don't want to have to go out and buy some new stuff. But yeah, I'll get this all cut out and ready to go. So I'm just going to use this off cut of eight inch pipe. Just to mark the hole, and we're going to Sort that out from the top. This one here is actually a little bit too small to use for the um, stilling well. It, it won't go down far enough. It's actually being used in the guinea pig hutch at the moment for one of them to uh, hide in. And again, all I'm going to do is drill a hole to start off the um, jigsaw. And zap that round. So just flip this lid over, put him on, and in goes the radial flow settler. And these little bolts here stop the settler from going all the way through. There you have it. Easy peasy. Now all I've got to do is the inlet and the drain out to the moving bed bioreactor. And pop this back in the other system. Because I'm reusing the stilling well from the other radial flow settler, I know I need the hole for the inlet to be 37 centimetres which is roughly around about 14 and a half inches from the base. So we can go and mark it pretty much all there and also draw on the tape while I'm at it. So I'm just going to come across here with my level and mark this there. So I know that the center of the pipe needs to be there. Now I have these two, now I have a jack dog. Hello, I'm recording. Should probably make sure this is nice and uh, straight first. Bring that level back across again. And, oh yeah, I might just have to come up a smidge just to where the top of that mark is there. So we know that mark there is roughly equal to this mark over here. So this mark here represents the center of the pipe that delivers water into the radial flow settler. And this mark here represents the center of the pipe that delivers it on this end here. So now I have this reference point and hopefully Jack will stay out of shot. What I can do is I can work out, g'day buddy, um, how far down I need to chop this pipe work here. When I glue it, I can pull this down, have a level going across this pipe work here, pull it down to where it's level and then, yeah, hunky-dory, everything should be nice and even that way. Now, it would be a lot easier if everything was on a nice flat plane, but unfortunately it's not, so uh, this is just the way I've got to do it. Uh, what I'm going to do first is install the inlet into the radial flow settler. For that, I need the drill and hole saw, which I forgot. So this one I'm just going to drill in situ here. And uh, put a lock on the drill, I think. There you go, that doesn't happen often, but <laughs> I should have locked it in, I think. A wombat robot. So I'm just going to um, tidy this up with the deburring tool. 
And these these uh, tank walls, these drum walls are nice and thick, so no no problems running a uni seal through these. So this section of pipe isn't necessarily the pipe that'll be running in there. I'm just using it for now. So I'm just giving a bit of a wiggle around. We start it off. Put the glasses back on the head. And there we go. I'll just make sure it's through on the other side. Yep, all hunky-dory. So I can now put a small level on that and uh, use that as a reference for cutting this pipe here. So I'm not going to be doing that today though. So I'm actually going to leave it there because as you can see, the sun's going down, getting a bit late in the afternoon and I have a couple orders I need to pack up and make the post this afternoon. So in tomorrow's hopefully exciting episode, we'll be working out the measurements for this and drilling the outlet for that and maybe chopping the top off the moving bed by a reactor. Thank you to all you folks who do come along regularly, thumb up the videos and leave comments down below. I really do appreciate it. And thanks to those folks who have purchased our Backyard Aquaponics Beginners Guide to support the channel and also learn about aquaponics. And you marvelous folks who are supporting us through the YouTube membership program and also the Farm Your Own Yard supporters page. I'm a little bit um, out of breath now, so I think I'll head up to the house. I do hope you're all well and happy, and I'll catch you next video. Cheers, folks, and happy growing. Now I have these two. Now I have a jack dog. Hello, I'm recording. Hey, out of there. Why do you always have to sniff around the cameras? Silly dog. Yes, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm trying to film a video. I am. If only you had opposable thumbs, you could be a cameraman. Rightio, now Jack's left the scene. Dang, people want to see your freckle, dude. Thank you.